back. Appreciate you. Glad to be back. Did you think you'd be back as soon as you were? Not as soon. I kind of I talked to somebody one day. I said in five years the plan was to be back. Less than 12 months later, it happened. So God is great. For real, I'm blessed. What was it about the job as a whole? Because Kevin O'Connell had mentioned that mm -hmm. what you said in the initial interview. So mm -hmm. what was it about this opportunity, this place that? made it that desirable for you. It, it sounds weird, but this was my dream school coming out of high school too. And now working here the first time, being a part of two Rose Bowls, winning, I'm sorry, two Pac-12 championships and winning the Rose Bowl, this place isn't like none other, realistically. With it being my dream school and then actually coming here firsthand and experience the place, there's not, there's not many places at all, if any, that's like the University of Oregon. So to me, it was a no-brainer. There's been a, a lot of O-line success here. Mm -hmm. You got Mirabal, Cristobal, Adrian mm -hmm. Clem. Is that a little bit intimidating at all to try and step up and fill those shoes? Not at all. Honestly, being able to be here previously under Coach Cristobal, Coach Mirabal, I'm being an offensive lineman myself, you kind of like that. Honestly, that's the world we live in. You like that pressure. But honestly, I feel no pressure. A bunch of these guys already, they know the standard. There's a standard of offensive line play that's here, and we got to exceed that standard. We're going to try to reach it, obviously, but we're trying to exceed it every single day. And that's been set way before Coach Cristobal and Coach Mirabal. There's been a ton of offensive linemen to come through here we're trying to continue to elevate that standard for you. When you're developing your guys, you're mm -hmm. recruiting your guys, mm -hmm. what are the traits that you're trying to find, trying to, to get out of them on the screen? Uh, physical, strong, athletic. It's a whole bunch of things. It's, it's, it's not just one thing. One guy may be more athletic than the next. One guy may be more powerful than the next. But you look for some of the things like you can't non-negotiables, finishers, guys who strain, guys who want to be extra. I like seeing guys push somebody on the end of their highlight and maybe have a little scuffle because I know you got a little edge to you. That means when you're out here competing with your guys, you're going to protect them. You're going to. You like versatility? You've been here before with a couple mm -hmm. guys who can play basically Any 85. Position. Is that important for you? It's pivotal because that's what made Calvin Throckmorton so valuable for us. He played 50-plus career starts, but he started at every position. And that's kind of the thing we tell our guys. If you want to get to the NFL, they're looking for versatile offensive linemen. You provide yourself insurance of having a job if you can play right tackle and right guard and center. And that's the beauty of spring ball right now because now a lot of these guys get to play a position they haven't really probably played in the past, and now you're getting a little bit of more tools in your toolbox. So that's going to be huge for us, getting guys to be versatile in multiple ways. Do you get any of those guys on the roster right now? Like oh, without I mean, honestly, that's the best part about spring. Even if you don't have guys, you kind of force it. You kind of force it. So guys who may have never done something before, they got to do it this time. They what is do your evaluation time. now of the offensive line, where it is, and mm -hmm. any couple guys that are standing out? Yeah, I mean, right now, all the guys are competing their butt off, really. Okay. Guys are competing their butt off. And right now, I think we're in a great spot. we got some young guys, obviously, some turnover, some change with – Alex Forsyth and Salah and TJ Bass leaving. And we're kind of in that transition that it was with them three years ago. People forget where they were the pups, and we, were, we see all the success they've had, obviously, because they've grown. We're in that next phase now, and we got a ton of guys that's working their butt off. We can, I can sit here and name every single guy because right now the grind they've had in the winter training, now bringing in the spring, they're competing their butts off every single day. And if it's anything that we ask of them, they're going to do it. Getting into the means of technique, mm -hmm. Mario and Alex were double under guys, mm -hmm. and Clem was more of an inside chest plate guy. Mm -hmm. You've seen the meta balls out there. Yep. Is, is double under kind of the, the preferred method for you? It's or? the preferred, but it's a little bit of variety. There's so many different ways your hands are going to fit in offensive line play. There's going to be times we're going to be more double under. There's going to be times we're going to be tight hands. And it's more dependent on the technique. A down block it might be more tight hands than double under. Wide zone might be more inside hands. When I talk about inside zone or tight zone, we're going to be double under, lifting guys' leverage. So being able to give our guys all the tools valuable, that when they get out there on game that they can use whatever's necessary. And, and you have several guys back who you coached before, mm -hmm. Stephen Jones being one of them. Yeah. How much does having a guy like him who has, by, by experience, the most experience, mm -hmm. most starts, those mm -hmm. things, we talk about the versatility also of guards, tackles. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're ever going to put him at center at yeah. 6'5". If but, he can help, that only help him. <laughs> <laughs> but how much does his presence help oh, in without this a, transition? Without a doubt. And it's crazy because I told like him, Marcus, JPJ, they were pups when I left. So those guys now to being in the leadership role and being in a role where they're demanding the room is great because even when we introduce an indie or something like that, they've done it before. They remember some of the lingo we had. So I'm able to connect some of the things that we were able to talk about before, bring it to life now, and they're now able to help the young guys. So it's, it's, it's pivotal for us. This place being your dream school, mm -hmm. you're a recruit. Does that come up in recruiting for you now, or does that passion you had for this place as a player help you as a, as a recruiter? No doubt, because to me, it's, I feel like I'm not lying. I feel like a lot of people recruit and lie. Yeah, there's nothing to lie about. You literally come to this place, you can see how special it is, and then actually experiencing it firsthand. It's like you know you have your dream. Like you think of Disney World and all that, but you get to see the behind the scenes of how this place runs and how what makes it so successful. It's so much easier to recruit because like it's your dream school, and when you get here, I'm gonna show you even more reasons why it'll be your dream school. 
Yeah. Someone me. that sorry, mm-hmm. someone that's been here before. Mm-hmm. What was the first thing you noticed about the way Dan Landing really plays? Man, to me, I say it all the time. He's like a maniac, but in a great way. Like he loves everything Oregon football. Anything possible to get us a national championship. That's what his aim is. And if you're not somebody who's along that. You may seem like our oh, coach is wild and nah. Coach is locked in on one mission and one goal. And if you're not locked in with that, please step out the way. We got one mission, one goal. And he's gonna every single day he's consistent with that. There's no there's no waiver we call it. there's no roller coaster in him. Coach is a rocket. We going to the top. Forsyth really credited you with helping him mm-hmm. in that twenty twenty and become the center mm-hmm. etc. That's your that's your home, that's your spot. Yeah. When you're replacing him mm-hmm. and you've got guys who just haven't had a lot of career snaps, mm-hmm. literally and figuratively. Literally. Yeah. Um, what are you looking for in there, and how do you get JPJ and Marcus to mm-hmm. feel comfortable with snapping to a really experienced player? Mm-hmm. And to me, it's more of a confidence deal, especially at center. Like Alex Forsythe, once again, three years ago, the confident player you all see now, that wasn't the same deal two and a half years ago. He grew into that. He always has been a confident player, don't get me wrong, but when you're snapping the ball, there's a pressure that's added to you because you got to get that snap back there. People were looking at him crazy when he offset it to the right a little bit for the longest time, but for him, that was able for him to have consistent snaps. So for us, it's right now getting Marcus and JPJ to be consistent in their snaps and then be confident that no matter what, you can handle your footwork, you can handle your identification, and you can just get your job done smooth in there. Josh Connolly, remind you of any of the Lemony Man, and, and years? Josh Connolly has a unique skill set that's is unique. I mean that respectfully. His feet, he almost has feet like a safety outside linebacker. He's got power out of a lineman. So he's got the tools that's necessary to be another special force. We've seen some special tackles here in our in our, in our short time here and in, in the past. If everything's right, he continue to work. Because one thing about it, the best part about Josh Connolly is he's a freak athlete, but he is the hardest worker in our room. And what does that do for everybody else? If the hardest worker, one of your best players in your room is your hardest worker, it becomes contagious. It when becomes you, contagious. When you went back and looked at film of him last year, because mm-hmm. you just limited, limited snaps mm-hmm. and that tight end, extra block mm-hmm. and stuff, heard from T.J. Bass, bowl practice, he kind of took it to another, mm-hmm. another level. Mm-hmm. What did you see in those holiday bowl practices from Josh that were different than the August, the September snaps from Josh? I think me personally, you can see a lot of times when you have a little bit more responsibility, you probably amp it up a little bit more. And Holiday Bowl was probably the first time. I wasn't here last year. Yeah. There was probably going to be a role for him to increase his role. So you probably amped it up a little bit more. And it's trying to find a, a lot of our young guys right now to, pr- to prep like you're playing in the national championship game tomorrow. Not sitting in the coast mode because you're like, oh, I'm not going to play for a little while. So I would assume I wasn't here. So I would assume probably it was getting closer to that time that Josh was probably going to get some more reps. So he probably amped it up even more. But he just put on display what everybody already knew. Working, working with the defensive line last year mm-hmm. with, with Minnesota, how does that kind of help your – offensive line prep and how you kind of view the view that position. It's not it helped it's helped me tremendously night and day. I honestly didn't want to do it. I never wanted to be assumed as a defensive line person, defensive line mind. But honestly the the tools it was able to allow me to help and bring back to these guys night and day. So with that knowledge and obviously working with this this offensive line, are there guys on the defensive line that have really kind of impressed you so far? Oh man. If you see every day I kinda I go I go clap up the defensive line first and I go tell them go kick our butt today. Because we gotta that's gonna be our our foundation. We got B Nasty, we got Brandon Dorless back, we got Popo back, you got Taki back, you got Mace back, you got Jordan. We can sit here and name all those guys. That's probably gonna be the most likely our strength of our team. And those guys know that. Those guys kicking our butt is gonna help us get better. That's gonna help us increase our thing. So I think me personally, all of them right now have done a tremendous job. For me, probably the biggest quote unquote shocker is Taki, because Taki's doing some things with his body of getting down. If he gets explosive like that, man, who's who in our conference is gonna block Taki? It's going to be a long day at the office for a lot of people. Why, why do you like Marcus Harper at center? Like, we've seen him yeah. reps there. What, what makes him so good at that spot? And to me, Mar- it's Marcus's mind. It's Marcus's mind. It's more so a deal to help him continue to grow as a player because if he understands what's happening in that center, it's going to help him at guard a ton a lot more. And he has that confidence. You can see how the guys kind of get around him and stick to him, having that uh, that aura to him. You won't mind that at center at all, and it's only going to help him get continue to grow. How is that battle with him? And, I, I don't know if mm-hmm. it's fair. Yeah, but with him and JPJ. Yeah, and, and honestly, it's great because like right now we're mixing everything with all these groups. So it's great to have a, a leader and a vocal leader on both sides if those guys are mixing and matching. So if one, so it's not just a one our a, a, a older guy at center with one side and the other side is a younger center. They're still trying to figure it all out. We have two older guys who know the system, who know the offense, who can confidently make calls. That way, it makes life easier for a poncho who's a young guy who's playing guard, who's for a young guy who's trying to learn it and maybe going on the fly. I can whisper to Marcus, and Marcus let him know exactly what to do. I mean, what has Johnny Cornelius brought to this room so far? Uh, a Johnny right now for us has brought a ton of, of veteran leadership because he just does things the right way at all times. Like if you watch for a Johnny, you look for a Johnny, a Johnny's going to be in the meeting room early. He's going to get extra work. He's going to ask extra questions for our young guys. It's a great person to be looking up because he's going to come to work every single day. And you can see if hopefully if you all see it every single day, 65 gets better and better. 
So we hope to continue to grow on that path. And as long as he continues to get confident, continues to know he's got the skill set to be whatever he wants to be, he's going to be in a solid spot. What's F- it been following like? up on that, why, mm-hmm. why, why would Steven and Johnny, why are they a good fit together on the right side? Uh, realistically, right now, I wouldn't say this the, it's the greatest fit. Right now, we're just rotating. And right now, we want to try Grizz out of some guard, try Grizz out of some tackle. So it just happens to be that fit right now. And when you look at it right now, you, you're not mad at that side at all if it were to pan out and we play the game tomorrow. But that's not the case. We just got guys rotating right now. And this is good to see those two guys because when you have large humans on one side, yeah. that's almost what it looked like when Shane and Panay were on one side a few years ago. You know what that does for you. So you helps, it helps protect the quarterback, without a doubt. And I think for them, being both older players, yeah. They can see things a lot faster, be able to communicate things way before it happens. What's it been like working with Will Stein and just kind of getting used to his offense and, and mm-hmm. kind of getting some ideas out there? Of your own? I see exactly why Coach Leonard brought him here. I can see why Coach Leonard brought him here because you can just tell the offensive mind that he is. Great energy, brings his energy every day. He's trying to bring the guys together. And I'm, obviously he knows like there, it's bigger than just running the ball or it's bigger than just passing the ball. It's having the cohesion of both. We're going, to be run, we're going to run the ball, but we're going to run the ball so that way we have one safety high, Troy Franklin can go dunk on somebody. So that's, those are the things you can see he's really trying to attack and getting our guys to get in, bought into it every single day. You mentioned about last putting question. guys in different positions on purpose in the spring. That's always part of the experiments mm-hmm. is the time you do it. Okay. How much does Junior being limited right now mm-hmm. impact, like talk about Stephen and Johnny being on the right side? Mm-hmm. Maybe that's long-term, maybe it's not. Mm-hmm. But that if Junior were here, how much does that impact what you do on the yeah. interior, who's a bit, just a very big, experienced body in the interior. Who's yeah, and, and it's not that it's a horrible thing right now. Once Junior gets healthy, we'll have Junior right back in the mix. But for us, once again, it just provides an, another opportunity for somebody else. And now Poncho can come up and play some guard. Mike Wooten can play some guard. Guys who probably wouldn't have got as much guard reps if Junior was here, they now get some more ample reps now. And once again, if the more the, the more reps we get in the bank, it only helps our team. Truly. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.